This is Jay Big Ticket 23 from GreenPCGamers.com. In this video, we are going to show you our Precision T5820 workstation that we optimize for gaming and other high-end computing. Um, so into the description of this video, we are going to post our T5820 blog page. And this page will be very helpful to you uh, because it will show you a bunch of awesome upgrade ideas for your T5820. Um, so if you're looking at optimizing your T5820 for gaming um, or you just need a little bit more uh, performance out of it, uh, we show you processor, uh, uh, processor upgrades, memory upgrades, graphics card upgrades, uh, as, well as, as well as other recommendations that will be helpful uh, to upgrade your T5820. Uh, so check out this blog page. Again, it'll be in the description of this video. and It'll be very, very helpful to you um, as long as you have a T5820 workstation. All right, so let's take a look at the specs on our T5820 workstation. Um, we have a Xeon quad-core W2125 4 gigahertz processor installed, uh, max turbo frequency of 4.5 gigahertz. Um, so uh, quite a bit of horsepower uh, compared to other um, Xeon workstations. Uh, we have 32 gig of DDR4 memory, um, four 8 gig modules. We are going to install in this video a uh, Samsung 500 gig Evo 970 NVMe.2 solid state drive um, with the PCIe adapter. Uh, we're also going to install a EVGA NVIDIA RTX 2080 Ti graphics card, the black edition in the system as well. Um, and then we have a Intel Gigabit network port, uh, DVDRW, the very important 950 watt power supply that you'll need if you plan to install a high-end graphics card like we are. And then uh, Windows 10 Pro 64 bit. Um, so those are those are basically the specs that we're using. Um, we pick high clock speed components um, to optimize the system for you know for max performance you know during gaming. That's our big thing at GreenPCGamers.com. All right, so let's check a take a look at the actual uh, system that we uh, upgraded. Uh, now this, this system is is fairly new. Um, and it's in excellent condition. Um, you can see that we've got a couple US, uh, USB uh, 3.1 ports in the front here. Um, audio, uh, if you plan to plug a headset in uh, or you plan to do VR with the USB 3.1 ports. And then an SD module if you plan to um, do photos or something like that. Uh, now we got this cool little feature that's new on the T5820. They didn't have this on the T5810. There's a little door that opens up that allows you access to four three and a half inch drives and then they also have the little adapter to put two and a half inch drives in them as well uh, this is really cool because if you're like us we're doing an nvme.2 drive uh, just for maximum performance but if you wanted you could put a bunch of uh, large capacity sata drives set the system up in uefi mode and have a huge uh, a storage backup drive built into the system all right so here's the back of the chassis uh, we got more usb ports uh, we have there our Intel Gigabit network port, uh, PS2 ports, serial port, and more audio ports. And uh, this system also supports optional like 10 gig PCI Express cards. So if you need faster than gigabit um, speeds, um, you could install another uh, PCI Express card. Um, so it, you know a bunch of awesome ports that are available for you on this upgraded system. All right, so this is really important. This 950 watt power supply. This is an optional upgrade on the T5820. If you plan to buy a T5820, we definitely recommend buying it with a 950 watt power supply. Otherwise, it's going to limit you on what graphics cards you, you can actually install. So um, definitely get the 950 watt power supply. It, it's, it's a must if you plan on doing any sort of high-end computing with this system. All right, so that's very, very important. All right, so we're going to take a look inside the chassis. Um, we're going to remove our side panel like so and give us access inside all right it's a very clean chassis um, here's a look at the side panel the mechanical overview um, and so if you need to pause this take a look at it a little bit closer uh, we're also going to zoom on the electrical overview so feel free to pause this if you need to uh, look at this a little bit longer i'm just going to show you you know basically everything you want to know about the motherboard all right so here's a look at the io slots uh, auxiliary power um, all of our SATA ports, um, as you can see, there's two 8-pin, uh, um, but they split off, and they can be 6-pin as well, power adapters, which is perfect for our RTX 2080 Ti um, because we need exactly two 8-pin power adapters. So we don't have to get crazy about adding weird power adapters to this system. 
Um, it already comes standard with exactly what we need uh, because we have the 950 watt power supply installed. All right, so here's our I.O. slots. Um, we do have two PCIe X1675 watt slots. And then it looks like we have three other PCIe X16 slots for other um, cards, as well as an ancient PCI slot if you have older, older like 32 bit cards that you need to install. So this is a great spot for your NVMe.2 solid state drive, your graphics card, um, and if you do want to upgrade to uh, a higher end, uh, uh, like a 10 gig uh, copper uh, network card. All right, so underneath this shroud that we're going to remove is where the processor and memory are located. Now, this is a single socket CPU system board. Um, so um, this is where that, uh, that quad core W2125 processor resides. And then we've got four 8 gig modules. Now, there's eight slots, so you could actually install an insane amount of memory in this system. Um, so if you do need more than 32 gig of RAM, um, you can go crazy. You know, put 64 gig modules in each slot and you're... You're, you know, you'll have a ton of memory installed. All right, so we're going to put that shroud back on twice. Sorry about that. And that will click right into place. Rewind. All right, so here's our RTX 2080 Ti graphics card that we're going to install. Uh, this is a monster of a card, great for gaming, um, and it also fits perfectly inside this chassis. And then here's our two A pin power that we require. So this system's perfect. Like a lot of the other systems that we've installed cards like this into, like the older legacy systems, uh, we need a bunch of different power adapters, but not in the T5820 with the 950 watt power supply. All right, we got a whole bunch of ports. Uh, we got display port that we're gonna use for max resolution, HDMI, and it looks like a mini display port as well. All right, so we're gonna move up our retention clip so we can start installing our upgrades. All right. First, we're going to move these 8-pin power adapters out of the way so you can get a little bit better view of what we do. All right, and then we're going to put our RTX 2080 Ti graphics card in the system. This card's pretty heavy, um, and it's going to eat up two slots. Now, some of the RTX 2080 Ti's will eat up three slots. So we're just going to line it up and let it drop into place in that PCI Express 75-watt slot. You must use a 75-watt slot for this. Then we're going to plug in our two 8-pin power adapters. Now, again, if you have, if you only require 6-pin power for whatever graphics card you plan to install, um, the, it splits away, so these can be 6 or 8-pin. So it's a really nice feature to have. Most systems don't have two 8-pin power adapters built into them. All right, so here are the benchmarks that we ran um, with our RTX 2080 Ti installed in this system. So if you're going to run at 720, uh, 328 average frames per second. Uh, if you're going to run at 1080, 220 average frames per second. If you're going to run at 1440, 147 average frames per second. So this card's a monster. Um, we were we we used a uh, Furmark benchmark, which is basically trying to um, emulate gaming to see what you're going to get with uh, with these resolutions. Um, so this card performs awesome in this system. Um, to average over 145 on 1080p, or sorry, on 1440 is amazing. All right, so here's our NVMe.2 solid state drive in our adapter that we're going to install. So here's the model number of the adapter. And then again, all these part numbers that we're going to show you, they're all located on greenpcgamers.com on our blog page. So check it out if you, uh, if you want to see those part numbers so you can try to order these parts. So we're going to install this above the graphics card into that PCIe X16 slot. And then that's all we're going to install, so we're going to go ahead and shut that. All right, so here are the, here's the performance that we, uh, we achieved with the Samsung 970. Now, people look at the max uh, reads and, and writes um, that the manufacturer will say on their site, which is, I believe, 2300 and 3400 for this card. Um, we didn't achieve that fast, but those are like the max. So our average uh, reads and writes are actually pretty good. Um, you can see the average writes were 1,045. Um, average reads were 2,481. So that's pretty good. It's not near max, but you you know you can't really expect it to run at max speed at all times. Still insanely fast compared to a conventional uh, SATA solid state drive. All right, so we're going to put our side panel back on. And we're going to show you some other things about the system. We'll take a look at the back of the chassis 
and show you what it looks like with our card installed. On, the, on top of the black slot is our NVMe.2, and then we have our graphics card below. So it looks really clean. Um, we're going to go into the F2 setup, go into system information, just show you what it looks like with a 32 gig of RAM installed. And then we got our W2125 4 gigahertz processor installed. So awesome processing power for a precision like this. This, I mean, th this processor will rival some of the um, high-end gaming CPUs that you see, like the i7 8700K or 7700K. Obviously, you can overclock those, um, but but this will rival those with just with the base uh, speed. All right, so now we've loaded into Windows 10. We're gonna go check out the device manager. We're gonna show you our Samsung 970 NVMe drive, our display adapter, our RTX 2080 Ti, as well as our CPU threads. It's actually a quad core processor, but it shows up as eight threads in Windows 10. Then we'll show you system. So everything is, is working perfectly. The system is, you know, it, it, Runs really, really, really well for gaming, um, but it is definitely an expensive system. So if you're on a budget, this is probably not a system that uh, that you'd want to buy. But if you're if you're someone who already has a T5820 and you're looking to do you know work with it during the day, uh, like you know do CAD work during the day and then game at night, this is an awesome configuration for you because that RTX 2080 Ti will work really well for both uh, applications. Um, so hopefully this video was helpful to you. If it was, please consider subscribing to the channel. Um, definitely check out GreenPCGamers.com blog page for, for more information. Also, we do monthly giveaways on our Facebook page. Um, so if you like free stuff, all you have to do is like our Facebook page and you will qualify for those free giveaways. Thank you so much for watching.